underrated to be rated or valued too low. Throughout NBA history, there have been many, many great players, many all-star caliber, superstar caliber players who have built great careers and great legacies. But with so many great NBA players, there are bound to be some great players that are forgotten, underappreciated, and not talked about. And in this video, I would just like to go over some of those players, you know? So just grab y'all popcorn, grab y'all snacks, you know what I'm saying? Grab you a drink if you need to, sit back, relax. And these are the four most underrated players of all time, in my opinion. <sighs> Let's get it. Mark Price was the star point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers throughout the late 80s and the early 90s. And I feel like the thing that stands out about Mark Price's game the most was just how prolific of a three-point shooter he was and how efficient he was throughout his career. And Mark Price was one of the first volume three-point shooters in NBA history. And just to put into perspective how ahead of his time he was, in the 1990 NBA season, Mark Price averaged 2.1 threes per game on 5.1 attempts. And he was doing this on around 41% shooting from three. And just to put that into perspective, the average team this season was shooting six threes a game and making 2.1 of them. So that just goes to show you how ahead of his time this man was in terms of his shooting. Um, and throughout his prime, in Cleveland from 1989 to 1994, he was giving you about 18 points, eight assists, and he was doing this on 49, 41, 92 shooting splits. So those are just Steph Curry-esque levels of efficiency. Uh, one of the most efficient players in NBA history. And you know, he's no foreigner to that because he was the second player in NBA history to become part of the 50 40 90 club behind larry bird you know he's also a three-time uh leader in free throw percentage um he's actually third all time in free throw percentage behind steve nash and steph curry you know he retired number one but he got passed by those guys you know he was just all around such a great player on offense didn't give you too much defensively, but uh, just ahead of his time offensively. You look at a lot of the great point guards today and see how they play the game, uh, shooting off the dribble, coming off pin down screens, splitting the pick and roll. Mark Price was one of the first players to do a lot of those things. He's really just a pioneer when it comes to that point guard position. Great playmaker four-time all-star, four-time all-NBA performer. Uh, and he's just one of the greatest second round picks of all time. One of the pioneers of the point guard position. And he just gets lost, you know, because there's so many great point guards in NBA history. He just kind of gets lost in that, you know, but nonetheless, one of the greatest players in NBA history, in my opinion. Rick Berry, or as I like to call him, Ricky Buckets. Now, this nigga was, <laughs> he was a great player, I'm not going to lie. But I've done some research on him, and it turns out that this man was actually a terrible person. <laughs> like, he was a terrible teammate. Like, he was very hated. Like, I looked at a story, it said he, like, threw game, he basically threw game seven of the Western Conference Finals because like one of his teammates made him mad he literally iced himself from the game but <laughs> without with all that being said nonetheless rick barry is one of the most prolific scorers ever rick barry is the only player in nba history to lead the ncaa the nba and the aba in scoring and in his second year in the league in 1967 this man averaged 35.6 points per game, which is eighth all time in points per game in a season. And actually, of all the players to average 35 points per game, 
all the seasons where there's uh, been a 35 point per game score, he has the highest free throw percentage of any of them at 88.4%. You know, and you know, he's known for his granny free throws. And it just, it always blew my mind how he was able to like keep that level of efficiency with such an unorthodox free throw. You know, he led the league in free throw percentage seven times. For his career, he's 89.3% in uh, free throw percentage, which is in the top 10 all time. And he's one of only two non-guards on that list in the top 10. You know, he's a 12-time All-Star. He's a Finals MVP. And he was really one of the pioneers one of the first volume perimeter scorers in NBA history. Because, you know, throughout the early stages of NBA history, it was mostly dominated by big, scoring a lot of points. But Rick Barry, he kind of took that role as, like, the one of those perimeter scorers, you know. He's got most of his um, on the perimeter, shooting jump shots, uh, getting to the free throw line. Um, you know, in terms of 40-point games, just to put in perspective how great of a scorer this guy was, he has 70 40-point games, which is ninth all-time. And 50-point games, he has 14 of those, which is sixth all-time. So when you, next time you talking and you having a debate with one of your friends talking about who's who the greatest scorers of all time are, be sure to give Rick Barry his credit and mention him because this man does not get his credit one of the greatest small fours of all time and just an outstanding player. Now, pardon me, man, because I might rant on this one a little bit because it, it really just blows my mind how underrated Kevin Love is, man. Like, this man does not get his respect whatsoever. Like, I know it feels like I haven't watched the Kevin Love game in, like, two or three years. But nonetheless, man, this man one of the greatest players of all time. He should be hot take. I don't know if this is a hot take or not. He should be a first battle of Hall of Famer when he retires. He probably won't be, but, you know, this man is a five-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA performer. 2011 most improved player and rebound leader in the same season 2016 NBA champ you know he has a ring he I feel like he mostly gets hate because of you know once he got to Cleveland he started getting that you know I like to call it the LeBron effect you know when you once you become teammates with LeBron and you're like a star level player you everything you do is just put under a microscope you know you have to be damn near perfect you know what i'm saying and i just feel like kevin love was affected by that and his image as a whole because for his career this dude is giving you like 18 and 11 for his career and throughout his prime in minnesota this dude was averaging 23.5 points and 13.7 rebounds on 45 37 82 splits this man was a double double machine walking double double man he could he had just such great footwork in the post great shooter at his position incredible rebounder and actually in the 2011 2011 season on november 12 2010 this man had 31 points and 31 rebounds and when he did that he became the first player to have a 30-30 game since Moses Malone in 1982. And also, another crazy game that Kevin Love had that doesn't get talked about enough is on November 23rd in 2016, where he had 34 points in the first quarter of that game, which is second all time for points in a quarter. Now, granted, he only scored 40 points in the entire game, but in this game, in the first quarter, he shot 11 for 14 and 8 for 10 from 3, man. So those are just some of the performances Kevin Love has put up. Two of the greatest performances we've ever seen in recent history. And this dude was just phenomenal, bro.
10, like I feel like 10 to 15 years down the line, he's just going to be one of those guys that kind of gets lost in the sauce because of his his scrutiny that he received when he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Or well, he's still with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but more specifically when he was teammates with LeBron James. You know, but uh, with all that being said, K-Love, just an incredible player, man, you know. <laughs> Next time, like next time you want you talking about you know just great rebounders, great double double machines. Make sure you get this man K Love his credit because there haven't been too many players since him to come along and be able to do some of the stuff that he's done. Now this might be the meat and potatoes of this whole list, and. Ending off this list, we got Moses freaking Malone, chairman of the boards. In my opinion, Moses Malone is probably the most underrated center in NBA history, bro. This man was a three-time MVP, 13-time All-Star, two-time All-Defensive uh, team, six-time rebound champ, eight-time All-NBA. This man won back-to-back -back MVPs on different teams, bro. Imagine winning MVP, switching teams, and still winning that mug. Like, come on, bro. You know, and he was the leader of that great 1983 76ers team that ended up sweeping the Lakers. He made Kareem look like a fool. One of the greatest teams in NBA history doesn't get talked about enough. And one thing that stands out about Moses Malone, I think, is that he is by far in large the greatest offensive rebounder of all time. Like, for his career, this man averages 5.1 offensive boards per game, which is first all time. And in the 1979 NBA season, this man averaged 7.2 offensive rebounds per game. And just to put that in perspective, in this season, he grabbed 587 total offensive rebounds. You know who was second in offensive rebounds that year? Daniel Roundfield with 326. <laughs> like, like he has, he has six of the top 11 best offensive rebound per game seasons ever. And he's... He's actually second all time in offensive rebound percentage, uh, tr only trailing Dennis Rodman. And all time, he's fifth all time in rebounds. He's 10th all time in points. He's second, like, funny enough, he's second all time in free throws made behind his brother. And, you know, this man, I feel like I heard this in a Johnny Arnett video, so shout out to him. Uh, he said one of the reasons why he's forgotten or underrated is because he was such a journeyman uh, throughout his career. I, f I believe he played for like nine different teams. So, you know, it's kind of hard to like put a franchise to his name because like, you know, other players like a guy like Steve Nash, you look at Steve Nash, you think the Suns, you look at uh, Allen Iverson, you think the Sixers, you look at uh, David Robinson, you think the Spurs, but like this man played for so many teams that he just doesn't have one team to his name. So that's definitely a reason why he gets underrated. And like, this man was just a great scorer. Like, I just showed you all those stats, just how great of all around player this dude was, man. Like he had multiple seasons where he was averaging 25 to nearly 30 points per game. This dude is arguably a top 15 player of all time, and he just doesn't get talked about. And it just, it really just blows my mind, man. Like, he just really was, he was that dude, bro. Like, Moses was that dude, bro. Like, and next time you talking about great centers, bro, if you don't mention Moses Malone, I might pull up to your spot and just, like, I might have to, like, you, I mean, you might have to get like pimp slapped or something, bro. Cause this man is just egregiously underrated, in my opinion. Yo, yo, yo. With that being said, y'all, I appreciate y'all for watching this video. You know, it took me a while to come up with these players because there's so many great 
players in NBA history that are underrated. And you know, just comment down below who you guys think are some underrated players in NBA history. And if this video does well, I might make this a series where I just talk about underrated players. You know, there might be more videos to come in the future. But I love all of y'all. I thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And we out here, man.